So I really want tea, but I shattered the tea kettle yesterday. <laughs> well, hello there. As I wait for my coffee to brew, I thought I would tell you about this book. I got two copies in the mail yesterday, because I ordered two copies, and I thought, what do I need with two books? Maybe I'll give one away to you guys, because you are so amazing, but maybe you should stay tuned until the end of the video to find out. But let me just explain to you exactly what this book is. I heard it mentioned on a TV show, and I thought it sounded amazing. It's literally just a list of 14,000 things to be happy about, and life gets rough for everybody, as I will explain later in the rest of this video, so let's just pick a page and discover a few things to be happy about. Sunday brunch buffet. Knowing there'll be many surprises in the future. Black bean and corn dip. All right then. A farmer's market tailored to the kind of cooking you do. For me, that would be making coffee. It's the only kind of cookie I actually do. Speaking of which, the coffee's done. Getting to know people. Secondhand books. Girl bands. Test tubes. What? Okay. Stay tuned to the end of this video to find out if maybe I'll give away an extra copy. I do apologize for what I'm about to say in advance because I feel so strongly about this topic. I get stupid comments occasionally, but it's so occasional and it blows my mind because people talk about the internet being a terrible place full of trolls, but you guys are amazing. Like, it's been an incredible experience and you guys have been so supportive. But there are some weirdos out there. I delete comments every once in a while, but I saw this comment. <sighs> And this guy said, it could be worse. On my video where I like go up to Denver and get my cast off and see my leg that's been amputated for the first time. And I couldn't stop myself from replying to him. I probably should have just let it go. And don't worry, I'm never like mean to people on the internet because that just seems like a dumb thing to do. I did reply and I, I said, you're thousand percent correct. First of all, yes, it could always be worse if I lost both my legs and both my arms, it could still be worse. Like, it could always be worse. There is, I'm pretty sure I've said this in a video before, there's one person on planet Earth who has, like, the card for worst situation ever. And aside from that, all of us get to live in admiration of it could be worse, except for that person. But that comment is never helpful for anyone to hear. And it didn't piss me off for my sake, or maybe it did a tiny little bit, I don't know, I'm still unpacking that, but it pissed me off for like the sake of humanity, the sake of everyone. I have literally given speeches in public about this. Speeches where I was asked to be there, by the way, like I didn't just like put a soapbox up and stand and start preaching to people about how much it could be worse, it's not helpful, but you can't like just deny someone's pain based on the fact that other people in the world have it worse. And this is something I've struggled with so much. Also, I'm pretty sure I let, let my TV on fire. Just give me a second here. <laughs> I mean, it's not on fire, but it looks like it. I'm not supposed to hop, guys. Please don't tell my doctor. Just gonna move that. Yeah. Away. Anyways, now that that is fixed, I should correct what I said. You can deny someone's pain based on the fact that someone else has it worse. It's why would you, though? I think when we tell people that, like, it could be worse, what we're really saying is, I don't feel like dealing with what you're going through. I don't feel like listening. I don't feel like helping you process it. I don't feel like sitting with you as you feel this difficulty, pain, whatever it is. Okay, let me just pause this for a second. I'm editing this video right now, and I realized that I completely left out another reason why this phrase is so common, and it's probably the most common. I made it sound like it's always a negative thing or like someone just doesn't want to deal with you or, you know, like they're just in some way like not a bad person, but just saying a bad thing. That, I don't think that's it. I think often it's motivated by not knowing how to respond to someone or thinking that like it's a helpful thing. Like, hey, look on the bright side. Other people have it worse. But as I've thought about this phrase for years and how I've internalized it and how oftentimes it's a very negative thing, I've thought a lot about how it actually affects me, how it affects the people I know and love, and kind of the psychology that's actually behind it. And so before I continue on with this video, I just want to take a moment to correct the idea that I think I was giving that like it's a mean, awful thing to say because I don't think it is that. I just think it's not helpful and I think the way that we perceive it as being this helpful phrase to tell people sometimes it isn't actually helpful. It's it's actually, in a way, a very damaging thing to tell ourselves and a damaging thing to tell others because it's a suppressive phrase, in a way. If that makes sense, I hope it does. Let me know what you think in the comments below and let me continue on. And we are culturally programmed to tell ourselves this and this is something that I've spent seven years of my life actually trying to, like, 
work through and process and I put out a video a while ago talking about how I thought you know before getting my lower leg chopped in half that it would be pretty severe to have that done that this would be like a not a worst case scenario by any means but a pretty severe thing and then when I had it done and I joined amputee support groups those words of like it could be worse it could be worse it could be worse kept ringing in my head because I saw people who lost both their legs below the knees and, you know, more than that and so on and so forth. It is an actual avoidance technique to tell ourselves it could be worse. It allows us to ignore what we're going through and just deny it and be like, you know what, it could be worse, so I'm not going to deal with the fact that this thing has happened to me. I'm not going to process the emotion. I'm not going to let myself feel it. And I'm done with that in my life for, for myself. You know, like if people want to tell it to me, that's fine. and I'll post angry rant videos. <sighs> Sorry guys. But I just am exhausted by it as a cultural narrative. And I would never ever tell that to anyone ever. Something else that I think is funny about this is people are constantly telling me that like, oh, I shouldn't tell you about what's going on in my life because you know, you just had your leg amputated or because you're an amputee now. And I'm like, stop it. Like you're, you're my friend. You've always been my friend. I want to hear about what's going on in your life. I'm never gonna sit here and say that like, well, I guess you're dealing with issues at work and insecurity, but I had my leg chopped off, so shut up. Like, I'm never gonna do that because A, that would make me a really crappy friend and crappy person, and B, just because I'm experiencing something that's difficult for me does not mean that someone else is not experiencing something that's difficult for them. How much things impact us is based on prior experiences and I can tell you for sure this is not the worst thing that I've ever gone through or the worst thing I've ever experienced like not even a little bit it's challenging it's difficult and yes it could be worse but I'm done buying into that for myself for other people so just I'm just gonna end this video and say to whoever wrote that comment I appreciate you bringing it up and saying so your comment is not helpful to anyone as I hopefully kindly told you. Maybe I got angry, I don't know. <sighs> Anyways, maybe just take a moment today to look at whatever is difficult in your life, whatever you are struggling with, and know that it's valid. Doesn't matter what I'm going through, it doesn't matter what anyone else is going through. It's valid and it deserves to be dealt with. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't look at others' situations and be grateful for what you have or grateful that it's not on your plate, absolutely. But to deny others what they're going through, deny, to deny yourself it because of that is just epically not helpful. Okay guys, I'm actually going to stop recording now and let you go about your lovely days and hope that whatever you're struggling with gets better. And if you're not struggling with anything, that is fantastic. And I'll talk to you guys soon. So I'm not sure if I'm vindicated or upset. It's definitely not vindicated and it's definitely not upset. So I don't know why I said any of that. But he deleted the comment. But I can see that he responded, and so my response to him, like I said, was like, Hey, you're right, but why would you say that? And then his response was, I don't know, just saying. And then he deleted the comment. So what I'm gonna say is that my enlightened comment changed his mind, and he's going to rethink his life and his approach to human communication. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. I am going to be giving away a copy of this book because I want to, and you guys have brought so much happiness into my life. I would like to spread that right back. So, um, all you need to do to enter to win, and I will do this drawing Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Mountain Time, uh, oh, this is upside down, way cool, is comment a list of five random things that you find happiness in. They can be as random as you want them to be, and uh, that will enter you, and I will do a random drawing and announce the winner on Saturday. I look forward to seeing your answers, and I look forward to giving this away, and I appreciate you guys listening to my rant. Much love to all of you. I look forward to talking to you guys soon. Bye.